well if in the market for a luxury SUV which offers you the seating capacity of seven and also offers you four by four capabilities, off-road capabilities, then the Jeep Meridian is a perfect car for you. Uh, if you want to travel to Leila Dahar, if you want to travel for that off-roading adventure, then there's nothing quite good as this car. Now we'll tell you all the positives and the negatives about this car and all the details in a bit, but just have a look at this face. It looks really macho. It looks really bold and it looks like a typical SUV. You of course get this boxy grill with those seven Jeep slats. You also get these uh, brilliant looking lamps. And of course this color, this uh, green shade looks really terrific. Lots of chrome, but not too much because uh, it's balanced out and it caters to the Indian uh, mentality. And of course on the side, if you see the side profile, again, you get a very boxy and square shape. It's a really large car, it's a big car almost 4.8 meters in length so you can see that and of course the tires also these tires play a big role in giving it a very unique personality now these tires are running on 18 inch wheels and they fill out the squared out uh, wheel arches quite well and give this car a very planted and very muscular stance anyways enough about the looks of this car let's jump inside and show you what's special about the interiors Well, so now I'm inside the cabin of the Jeep Meridian, and as you can see, it's uh, exactly like the exterior, which means that it's nice and square and boxy in terms of design. Uh, the overall design language really does work very well. You get completely digital dials, and of course, you can change the look and feel of them by some degree. Uh, so that's also something which is quite good. Uh, what you'll also appreciate is the fact that the quality levels inside this car are generally very good, very premium interiors. A uh, lot of soft touch material on top of the dashboard, on top of the door panels. And of course, even over here where you rest your elbow and even this part where you keep uh, your left elbow. So it's a very nice place to be. The buttons for the AC, all the controls are generally nice and soft to operate. Uh, you get electric handbrake. You also get different driving modes sand, snow and auto and of course you get uh, the four wheel drive in low so that's also there you of course also get uh, hill descent assist as well as four wheel drive lock among other things and really it's a fantastic package in terms of the overall quality uh, cruise control is there automatic headlamps as well as this huge touch screen which really does work very well it offers you all the menus and sub menus easy to understand easy to navigate through and of course the front seats are cool as well on this car so really you get all the luxury features all the comfort features and then some inside the meridian this uh, nice soft materials over here work very well along with the stitching and of course uh, this champagne color also looks very rich and very premium along with the black so i think uh, jeep has done a very good job with the interiors of this car you also get a fantastic sound system it's an alpine uh, sound system and the music quality generally is very good the bass the treble the mid notes everything is uh, very clear and the voice separation also is generally good seat comfort is quite good as well although i would have preferred slightly uh, better support for your under thighs but uh, support for your back is good and you also get these bolsters and you also get the soft material along with the leather on these seats so mix and match uh, on the seats very premium very different from everything out there and definitely a car which uh, will keep you happy comfortable as well as entertained because of that excellent alpine system i'll give the front end of this cabin a very good score of 9 out of 10. Now let's jump in the back seat and see how good that is. And before I forget, also remember that you get a huge panoramic sunroof which now really is becoming the norm rather than an exception. Well, so now I'm in the second row of the Jeep Meridian. Now the good point about this car is that you get very high set seats and you get a nice 90 degree for the hip and knee angle, which means that even on the longest of long journeys, you sit very comfortably. Also, the hump in the floor panel isn't too much. So whoever's sitting in the middle has decent place to stretch his feet. You get a USB old school and 12 volt charging point and your own AC vents over here. And the windows are also very big and chunky. So you can get a good view outside. Now these seats are nice in terms of the high set uh, order so you sit really high up on the ground and you can see what's happening ahead of you and you can also look down on other vehicles maybe some hatchbacks compact SUVs uh, you can look down on them and tell them that you're in a macho and a real SUV because this car really is all about uh, realism and it is a very capable car it's a white car so you can easily have three three headrests as well and an armrest away with a couple of beverage holders if you of course decide to drive on a long distance journey overall it's a nice place to be in the second row of seats and i'll give it a decent score of nine out of ten knee room is decent could have been a little better but i think it's quite decent uh, some people compare this car with the safari and the safari definitely seems to have better comfort as well as better space in the back seat 
anyways enough about the spy let's talk about the jeep uh, meridian today because that's what we're talking about let's show you the last row as well and show you how much space as well as comfort is on offer over there well so now let's jump inside the last row of seats all you need to do is just press this button over here and this seat doubles down very smoothly very smooth effort all you need to do is jump inside like this and then get inside the last row of seats well, so once uh, you put this seat back in place, you can see that even this side of the seat can be removed. It's a 60-40 division, so your two sides of the seat over here and one of this side can be removed for easy entry and exit. Now, space is the best. It's not the biggest car in terms of space, but I think if you have uh, kids about four or five years of age, then they should be quite happy in uh, these seats and they should be uh, more than comfortable for those short journeys. Uh, about three or four hours, they'll be happy. But if you're really planning a 12-hour drive then you'll have to stop every couple of hours because space in the last row isn't really the best but on the plus side you get your own ac vents which have uh, different blower settings and they can be operated from here and you do get a couple of big beverage holders on the sides of uh, each seat anyways now let's check out the boot and then take this car out for a drive well so let's quickly talk about the boot of this car now if you drop the last row of seats down uh, you can split them and drop them down you get plenty of place in fact you can also use this car as a six seat if you don't uh, really want to use a seven seater and you have plenty of place to stretch those big bags and those big boxes. In fact, you can even take an air conditioning unit, complete unit in its own housing, its carton, and uh, that can easily be stored away with, of course, the last row down. But if you pull up all the seats over here like this and you put them on their last position and you have somebody sitting over here, then unfortunately, there isn't too much space over here. And also, this flooring is very high from the ground. It really is very high, so you really have to put in a lot of effort into it. Your back will definitely hurt and you can only keep a couple of small bags. So it's ideal to only have six occupants in the car and maybe drop the seat down completely and then keep uh, the luggage of all those other people inside this car without any fuss whatsoever. So the boot is an area of compromise inside the Meridian and that's the case with most seven-seater cars. Anyways, it's enough about the boot, the interiors and stuff. Let's take it out for a drive and tell you how it is to drive. Well, so here I am driving the Jeep Meridian now. Now, the Jeep Meridian comes with a 2-liter diesel engine which makes about 170 bhp and it comes with a 9-speed gearbox. Yes, it's not a 7-speed or a 6-speed. It is a 9-speed gearbox and you can shift the gears from here by using the shifter over here and moving it on the left. And I have to say that this is a fantastic gearbox in terms of people who drive a lot on the highway. Yes, people who drive a lot on the highway will really appreciate this gearbox. It's a fantastic gearbox and uh, the ships really are very good in terms of the pattern. They go up and down without any fuss whatsoever. And that's something which means that if you drive a lot on the highway, then the cabin feels very quiet because uh, on the highway, the revs, they go up and this uh, nine speed gearbox gives great flexibility to the engine. So if you drive in the city, uh, sometimes the engine can become a little loud if you keep it up to third or fourth gear because this is a slightly louder engine uh, than you know most CRDIs. But if you take it on the high venue, the eighth and ninth gear, then the cabin feels nice and quiet on most occasions. What you will also really appreciate about this car is their excellent ride. It offers you a very flat ride. And by flat, I mean that it just eats up all the badly passed over. It just eats them for breakfast and nothing is inside the cabin, nothing is felt inside the cabin. So that's also something good. The ride comfort is just brilliant on the uh, Jeep Meridian. What's also nice is the fact that uh, the overall steering wheel feedback is generally very good. Now it's neither overtly light, neither is it overtly heavy. So you don't really feel like you get tired at the end of a long day. And of course you also get nice and large mirrors all across. The window area is big, so you get a good view out of it also. And the water line is also visible quite easily. So all these things make it a very good car for people to drive themselves. And even if you are someone who drives the car a lot on the highways, even on the hills, you will appreciate this car. What you'll also appreciate is the four disc brakes, all wheel kit disc brake, and that's all something uh, with which you'll be quite happy because the braking really is good. As soon as you hit the brake pedal, this car drops the anchor down and it just, uh, you know, comes to a standstill very fast. And what's also really nice about it, along with all this, is the fact that uh, drivability also is generally very good. It's just that the engine tends to be a little loud when you rev it up, and that's something which I think that Jeep engineers should fix. Even though the cabin is very well cocooned, it feels very solid, it feels like a tank, the engine tends to be a little loud, and that's something that maybe they should fix on the Jeep Meridian. 
What else is there? Well, uh, it's a very well-rounded package, I think, in terms of driving. The only negative is that, uh, you know, the engine becomes a little loud. But overall, I think if you're in the market for any kind of proper off-roading car in which you can take your entire family, then the Jeep is uh, a good choice for you and you should definitely keep it in the top of your shortlist. Now, it's time for me to stop the car and I should give you a definitive verdict. In fact, let me give you a verdict driving this car. And the verdict for me is that even though it is an expensive car, even though it is, you know, a little expensive and you might say that, uh, you know, you don't really need such an expensive off-road. If you're a true blue off-road, if you're a true blue Jeep lover, if you're a true blue SUV lover, then this is a very good car for you. You can take your entire family, you can take your luggage and go on that 4x4 adventure. In this car, you can take it to Leila Dark with your family and this car will easily eat up all those badly passed roads, all those bad surfaces and all the worst of worst places. So keep this car on the top of your shortlist if you're in the market for a luxury premium SUV in which you can travel with your entire family. Hello everyone, welcome to Times Drive English. I'm Ankur Taneja and today we have with us is the new racer version of Tata Altros. As you can see, there are few aesthetic changes in terms of exterior in this racer version and also Tata is offering more features in this racer version of the Altros. So what all has changed, what all Tata is offering in this racer version of Altros. Let's talk about that. Now first let's talk about the changes that are there in the exterior of this racer version. So you get the blacked out bonnet and the blacked out sunroof with these racing stripes on the bonnet and the sunroof as well. And you get the 3 HD camera up front and, and this is one of the colors. There are three color options in this racer version. This one is gray and black. There's another color which is orange and black. And the last color is the white and black that Tata is offering in the racer version. And you get the racer badging on the side of this car. And from the side, it looks same as Altos. There's no change in terms of design, but you get this element over here below the doors, an extra element in this racer version. Same size alloy wheels as the Altos, but you get the blacked out alloy wheels option in this. And you get the blacked out spoiler in the rear and the i type of badging over here in this racer version. So, so these are the few changes that are there in the exterior of this Tata Altros racer. Now let's go inside and check out what all is Tata offering in the features. Now the additions that are there in terms of features in this new Altros, the first and the major change that is there is this 10.5 inch infotainment screen that Tata is offering in this racer version and also Tata has introduced a new version in the normal Altros where Tata will be offering some of the features that are there in the racer version of this car like this screen over here and this also gets the full digital instrument cluster and the basic information that is there is time, average speed, distance, average fuel economy and on the left side you get the tachometer and on the right side of the instrument cluster you get the fuel gauge and the temperature bar that is there in the screen and over here at the steering wheel you get the same controls as the Altros, the voice command options the call for disconnect options and the cruise control buttons on the right side of the steering wheel and there is one more addition in terms of voice commands you want to open the sunroof with your voice you can do that open the sunroof okay opening sunroof this is also one more addition that is there Close the sunroof. Okay, closing sunroof. Apart from that, you get the orange accents on the AC winds and around the gear knob over here. And you get the black leatherette theme in this Altros Racer version. And also there's an option of wireless charging over here. And you get the USB-A, USB-C and a 12 volt socket over here in the center console of this Altros Racer. And you get the racing stripes and the orange stitching around the seats as well. And also around the armrest as well. So these are the few major changes that are there in terms of features in the racer version of Tata Altros. And now you get the rear AC vents for the rear passengers as well. Now what all has changed in terms of engine, power and torque delivery and what this Altros racer version is going to cost you. Let's talk about that now. Now the last and final change that is there in the exterior of this Tata Altros is the dual tip exhaust that you get in the racer version. Now how does it sound? So what do you think about the exhaust note of this racer version? Liked it? Not liked it? Tell us in the comment section. The Tata Altros racer's engine delivers around 118 bhp which is approximately 30 bhp more than the 
standard ultros. Additionally, it offers 170 newton meters of torque, an increase of around 55 newton meters over the standard model. This enhanced performance is paired with six-speed manual transmission. In comparison, its competitor, the Hyundai i20 N-Line, boasts similar power figures but provides the option of both a six-speed manual and a DCT dual-clutch transmission. The new Tata Ultros racer is priced between 9.5 lakhs and 11 lakhs ex showroom, with the top R3 variant reaching the higher end of this range. Notably, the base variant of Ultros racer is 50,000 cheaper than the base variant of i20 N-Line, making it a more affordable option for those looking for a sporty hatchback. The Tata Ultros racer offers a compelling package in terms of features, design and performance. So what are your thoughts on this new Tata Altruz racer? Do share your views and follow Time Drive for more automotive updates and content. Today we are diving into the heart-pounding world of cruiser motorcycles with a head-to-head -head showdown between two legends, the Royal Enfield Classic 350 and the new Java 350. But the burning question remains, which one will conquer the open road? Well, this is what you are going to find out with me, Pavni Jain, on the latest episode of Times Drive English. We shall begin with the power trains. Well, going ahead with the power trains of Royal Enfield Classic 350, it offers 349cc single cylinder air and oil cooled engine. It also gives you a power of 20 bhp. It generates a torque of 27 newton meters and offers a gearbox of 5 speed. As for Java 350, it offers 334cc single cylinder liquid cooled DOHC engine. It also gives you a power of 22 bhp, generates a torque of 28 newton meters and features a 6 speed gearbox. While you get a larger number of engine displacement with Classic 350, the other specifications of the Java 350 are slightly better. For instance, it gives you a liquid-cooled engine instead of air and oil-cooled engine. It also offers dual overhead camshaft, which adds to 2 bhp of more power and also gives you an extra 1 newton meter of torque. Well, you'll also see a significant difference in the gearbox. The RD Classic 350 comes with 5-speed transmission, but the Java 350 offers 6-speed transmission. Now, this one extra gear can actually benefit you on the highways whenever you want to go over the speed of 100 km per hour. Rest, it also depends on one's individual needs and the terrain you're riding on. There's one more difference that I want to mention, and that is RD Classic 350 boasts single-barrel exhaust, but the Java 350 comes with twin barrel exhaust. Now what the twin exhaust do is that they allow gases to flow freely, which actually gives you more power, more torque, and sometimes better fuel economy as well. Time to move on towards the dimensions. Now the RE Classic 350 comes with the following dimensions in terms of seat height, wheelbase, ground clearance, fuel tank, and curb weight. Similarly, the Java 350 comes with the following dimensions in terms of seat height, wheelbase, ground clearance, fuel tank, and curb weight. As far as the dimensions of the two motorcycles are concerned, there are notable differences. The Java 350 offers 15 mm of lower seat height in comparison to RD Classic 350. Although both the motorcycles should be comfortable for people with different build and tallness, Yet out of the two motorcycles, the Java 350 with 790mm of seat height may give you a typical cruiser motorcycle feel. Next is the difference of 59mm in the wheelbase. With Java 350's 1449mm of wheelbase, the motorcycles seems to be lengthier in comparison to RE Classic 350. The other things that goes in the favour of the Java 350 over RE Classic 350 are an 8mm of extra ground clearance and also a slightly bigger fuel tank of 0.2 litres over RE Classic 350. Now please note, despite the extra things you get with Java 350, the bike manages to be 1kg lighter 
with a weight of 194 kg curb weight. The front tire of the Classic 350 measures 19 inches with 100 section. The rear tire measures 18 inches with 120 section. It comes in two options, alloy wheels as well as spoke wheels and it is not tubeless. As for Java 350, the front tire measures 18 inches with 100 section. The rear tire measures 17 inches with 130 section. It does not offer the alloy wheel option, but it does have the spoke wheel option. Again, just like the Classic 350, it is not tubeless. The front brake of the Classic 350 comes with 300 mm single disc. The rear brake comes in two options, either 270 mm single disc or the 153 mm drum type. Whereas the front brake of the Java 350 offers 280 mm single disc, the rear brake of Java 350 measures 240 mm single disc. You get the same front suspension in both the motorcycles, which is telescopic. In this department, Classic 350 comes with bigger front and rear tires that may boost a rider's confidence on the road. And Classic 350 also comes with larger disc brake, providing the better braking experience to the riders. Overall, looks like that Classic 350 won this segment to Java 350. It's better that we talk about the features now. The RE Classic 350 offers single and dual channel ABS, analog plus digital display, turn-by-turn -turn navigation display, fuel gauge, hazard lights, USB charging port. On the other hand, Java 350 comes with dual channel ABS, analog plus digital display, slip and assist clutch, dual horn, hazard lights, side stand cutoff. Now the biggest plus point that the Classic 350 has is the turn-by-turn -turn navigation which Java 350 lacks. But the Java 350 offers slip and assist clutch which Classic 350 doesn't have. Hence both the bikes come with interesting features that are also different from each other in a lot of ways. So you will need to study the feature list to find out what would you want in your motorcycle. But before you make any choice, let's have a look at the price tags. The RE Classic 350 dual channel ABS is going to cost you Rs. 2 lakhs 24,755 X showroom price. The new Java 350 is going to cost you Rs. 2 lakh 14,950 X showroom price. Here Classic 350's top end variant is approximately 10,000 rupees pricier than the new Java 350. So if you're planning to buy any one of these two motorcycles, one thing I will surely recommend is to go and take a test ride for both of them to see which one suits your style and comfort. Because both the Classic 350 as well as the new Java 350 offers distinct charm on the roads. Whether you like the thumping sound of the Classic 350 or the timeless elegance of the Java 350, one thing's for sure. The choice that you're going to make is going to be as thrilling as the ride itself. Also, remember that this segment is more about the emotion rather than the ride quality. Let me know which cruiser would you want to spend for in the comment box.